What's going on guys, Billy here, and the return to home feature within DJI's drones is a core function of how the aircraft operates. Personally, I don't choose to use it all that often, I'd rather fly the drone back to me myself as it's just faster, but god forbid something happens to the connection between my drone and the remote controller, return to home is the thing that's going to get the drone back to me. Now you can call return to home what you want, you can say that it's a convenience feature, you could say that it's an automated feature, you could even say that it's a lazy feature, but what I would say is that it is a safety feature for those what if moments. Now because of this, what I wanna do in today's video is go over how Return to Home works on DJI's drones from start to finish. So this is gonna be a full guide to how to use Return to Home on your DJI drone. It doesn't matter if you've got a Mavic Mini, a Mavic 2, a Spark, a Mavic Air, a Phantom, an Inspire 2. Return to Home works fundamentally the same on all of these drones, but there are a few key features that each individual drone has, which we'll get into at the end of this video. So I think that a great spot to start here would be going over all of the different scenarios in which return to home can be used. So this right here is pretty much every situation that I could think of. These include when the operator manually engages return to home, when there's heavy interference and it becomes difficult to control the drone, when the remote totally loses connection from the drone, if the remote for some reason malfunctions, if the remote totally runs out of battery and dies, or if the mobile device dies. I've also included an asterisk next to some of the times where the drone will automatically return to home, like when the drone totally loses connection and if the remote dies. In these situations, the drone knows to come back to its home point because you don't have any control over the drone. But on the other side, if there is heavy interference, if something breaks on the remote, or if the mobile device dies, then it won't know to come back to its home point. You as the operator have to manually trigger it. In order to engage return to home, on the remote there's a physical button which we press and then hold. You'll hear the following beeps and prompts that signify return to home has been engaged. There's also a digital button built into the DJI Fly app and the DJI Go companion application located on the left side of the main flight screen that will allow the operator to engage return to home. Both this and the physical button operate in the same exact way. So look, I am by no means an artist. I'm much better with a camera in my hand than I am with a pencil or a pen in my hand. But what I did is draw a little graphic that should explain to you how return to home fundamentally works. So you'll notice that if the drone is flying or hovering here at 150 feet and if I'm standing here next to the home point then once return to home is engaged whether the drone comes disconnected from the remote or whether I make the choice to return to home myself then it will fly up to the set return to home altitude it will rotate itself towards the direction of the home point and then it will fly a straight path to that position without changing altitude once it comes to the home point it will pause for a second and then it will begin its descent coming slowly down to the ground so you heard me mention that you can set your return to home altitude. That's because within the companion application for any drone that you use, there's the ability to set the altitude at which the drone will return to home. So if we're in the DJI Fly application, this can be found by tapping on the three dots in the top right corner and selecting the safety tab along the top. Then you can use the slider to select the altitude at which you want the drone to return to home at. Within the DJI Go app, the process is fairly the same as we want to tap on the three dots in the top right corner, select the main controller settings at the top, and then scroll down to return to home altitude where we can input a value up to 500 meters or 1,640 feet. You might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, what is the proper return to home altitude? The thing is, it's not really a one size fits all answer. It's something you'll have to change before every single flight as you move to different locations and different areas that you're flying in. The reason I say this is because one day you might be in an area where there's really tall buildings, really tall trees, and you set your return to home altitude high so that if your drone loses connection, or if you just engage return to home manually, then the drone will fly up high above all those obstacles and will come back to you safely. Now, let's say the next day you're in a big open field. There's no reason to have your return to home altitude set at, say, 400 feet because then you're just going to waste time and waste battery. Instead, the drone could just come back to you at 100 feet and it won't run into anything because there's no obstacle. So this is something you need to monitor before every flight. And it's one of the first things I check before I fly, especially if I'm in a new location. Now, here is something else to note that I can show 
you through my beautifully drawn diagram. We saw that if the drone was at 150 feet and the return to home altitude was at say 250 feet, then it would fly up to 250 feet and come back. But what if instead the drone was at 300 feet, so 50 feet above the return to home point? Well, in this case, the drone would orient itself towards the home point and just come back. It won't waste time dropping down to the set return home altitude. It just flies back at its current altitude. Remember though, this is only when the drone is above the set return to home altitude. So I've been talking a lot about the home point and although it should be pretty self-explanatory as to what that is, I figured I'd try and cover all the bases here and explain how that works. So the home point, think of it as like a GPS mark or a GPS coordinate that the drone remembers as the spot or the area that the drone will return to when return to home is engaged. Now, every single time you set the drone down and you turn it on, it establishes a GPS connection and it will automatically set the home point to where the drone is sitting at. You can monitor this GPS connection through your DJI Fly app or your DJI Go application by looking in the top right corner and seeing how many satellites you have. The more satellites, the better as your GPS connection will be stronger and that home point will set faster. Now, theoretically, you can take off without having a home point set, but your flight will be limited. You can't fly as fast, you can't fly as high, and you can't fly as far. But once that home point is set, then you can fly your drone as you usually would. Now, if you jump into either of the companion applications that you use, such as the DJI Fly, app or the DJI GO 4 application, you can actually manually set the home point and change it mid-flight if you find necessary. So within the DJI Fly application, we'll tap on the three dots in the top right corner, and then we'll tap on update home point, which will allow us to set the home point to where we're located with the remote controller, to where the drone is located, or we can even freely set the home point to wherever we please, which is something brand new for drones, at least from DJI. We haven't been able to freely set the home point, but if we flip over to the DJI GO app, We'll again tap on the three dots in the top right corner and then select the main controller settings. Again, you have the ability to set the home point to where the drone currently is at or where you are currently at holding the remote controller. Remember though that you don't have to manually set the home point each time. It will automatically set the home point every time you turn on the drone. Another quick tip that I wanna throw in here is that once return to home has been engaged and the drone is flying back to you, you can still control the drone if need be. You can even cancel the return to home process by clicking on the physical button once the drone will just come to hover or you can tap on the X on the left side of the companion application in order to stop the drone to stop the return to home process even when the drone is landing and coming down and if you want to change its course because it's not going to land where you want it to you can move the drone forwards backwards left or right and you can even pause the drone and have it fly upwards by increasing the altitude you can fully control this drone but once your hands are off the sticks then the return to home process is going to continue on so if you increase your altitude and then you stop the drone will then continue to land. Okay, so those are the basic fundamentals of how Return to Home works on DJI's current lineup of drones. Now what I wanna do is get into more of like the advanced features that Return to Home offers. And it's gonna be kind of hard to go over this because certain drones have certain features while other drones don't have these certain features. So in order to make things very easy, on the left side here is a list of all the features I'll be covering, while on the right side is a chart that I've compiled with all of DJI's current drones that offer these said features. You'll notice that the higher end drones have features that the lower end drones don't and even those lower end drones have features that the higher end drones don't. This is what happens when DJI has different teams working on different drones. I really wish that features like these came standard across all aircraft but unfortunately that's not the case. So let's start things off here with precision landing, which has gotta be one of the greatest updates that DJI has brought to return home since return home was even made a thing. Now, once the drone lifts up and once it takes off, it uses those downward obstacle avoidance cameras to essentially take a picture that will then analyze when the drone lands to aid it in coming back down to the same exact spot. For example, take a look at the Mavic 2 Pro as it begins its descent down towards the ground. You'll notice that it makes small micro adjustments, especially Especially when it gets closer towards the ground to land exactly where I took off from. It uses a combination of the obstacle avoidance cameras and the onboard GPS to identify exactly where it needs to go. Now that test was done in an area that was wide open, but 
What about in an area where it's much tighter, where there's less clearance? I did some return home tests here on the balcony of my apartment and you'll see that there is really not a lot of room for errors as it could end up hitting the table, it could end up hitting the railing, it could even land up on the roof, or it could miss the balcony completely. As it comes down closer to the ground though, it began establishing the home point as you can see in the top left corner and it made some adjustments so it could make a safe landing right where I took off from. You may be thinking to yourself, okay, well what happens if I'm in the position where my remote controller totally dies and the drone is coming down and it's gonna hit the table, it's gonna hit the railing or it'll end up on the roof and I've got no control over that. Well, first of all, my instant gut instinct is to run and grab a charger for my remote controller as soon as possible. Actually, I probably wouldn't even put myself in a situation where my remote controller would even come remotely remotely close to dying, I always want to make sure that that thing is fully charged no matter what. But if we dig through some of the settings within the drone we're using here, say the Mavic 2 Pro, we'll notice that at the top of this page, there are two options. One is called enable vision positioning and the other is called landing protection. When the drone is coming down, it essentially uses its sensors to scan the area when both of these settings are turned on. This gives you the peace of mind knowing that your drone isn't going to come down smashing into anything. It'll first check to make sure nothing is in the way and if there is something in the way then we'll cancel the landing procedure and just come to a hover. Now next up we have return to home at current altitude, RTH at current altitude, which is pretty self-explanatory. It'll pretty much override the set return home altitude you've put within the application and it'll just fly back at whatever altitude that it's currently at, which I really don't find all that much use for. But if you wanna turn this on, you can go ahead into the DJI Go application, tap on the three dots in the top right corner, go ahead and move into the main controller settings. And right there it says return to home at current altitude. Moving right along here, the next feature that we have is Dynamic Home Point, which unfortunately is only available on two drones, the Spark and the original Mavic Pro. DJI hasn't added it to any other drone. Now, the way that this works is the Home Point resets every 20 seconds or updates every 20 seconds to where the aircraft currently is. So if you plan on using ActiveTrack as the drone follows you, the Home Point will move along with you. I wish that they gave you the option to have the Home Point update to the controller if you want to, but I don't see DJI continuing to add this feature as it hasn't been added to any of the other drones they've released in the past three or four years. Now, the final feature here is Smart Return to Home, which unfortunately, just like Dynamic Home Point, is only available on two of DJI's drones, the Phantom 4 series, which was introduced with, and the Inspire 2. Unfortunately, it's not on any of DJI's other drones. So the way that this works is that as you're returning to home, if the drone notices that there is an obstacle in the way, it will alter its flight path to go around that obstacle which is pretty cool. Now, the thing is with the Mavic drones, what they do is as they're going, and if you've got obstacle avoidance turned on, when it sees an obstacle, it'll come to a stop, it'll fly up and over, but it won't just go around it. So I guess that they kind of work the same, but Smart Return to Home is only available on the Phantom 4 series and the Inspire 2. Anyway, guys, that wraps up this video on the Return to Home fundamentals and the Return to Home advanced features. Hope you guys enjoyed, hope you learned something, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.